So this is not a repair video. This is a look at the nicest, smallest, tape-based video camera I have ever owned. Let's check it out. Today I figured I'd look at a couple of little camcorders. Just, just a comparison here. So this is gonna be a really short video. Uh, this is the one that I just fixed. You can see how tiny this little DCR HC26 really is. The smallest camcorder I ever owned, personally, is this one here. And I love this little camcorder. I used this thing for years. I used it as a second camcorder when I was still shooting uh, video. And I carried it as a backup. And I used to take it with me when I went on holidays and everything because at the time, 2000, I think it was 2005, at the time, this was probably one of the best camcorders that you could have owned. Now, we're still talking tape. It still records onto mini DV tape. But that's where the similarities end. You see, this one is a high definition camcorder. So, in addition to having your standard DV, HDV out, it also has a full size HDMI. So, you can plug this directly into a TV and play back the tapes directly. Uh, it uses the same batteries. In fact, it uses the same battery that the camera that I'm recording this on uses. This one had an Infolithium H, but the V battery is identical, so you can use the V battery. This battery actually will go onto this camcorder as well. I didn't think it did initially, but it does. You just press it on like that, and voila, it, uh, it fits. Even though this camera says it takes a lithium, info lithium P. The H series will fit as will the V series. Anyway, on this one here, this one here also, I think this one also says it uses the P series battery. So this one also uses the P series battery. The H series battery was a replacement for it and the V series battery will also work. Now what won't work though, interesting enough, the H series and the and the V series batteries are different. Let's just go over that for a second. So this is a V series battery and this is an H series battery. They look identical. This is a higher capacity battery so it's a little bit bigger. We look on the bottom, they look identical too. Almost, almost identical. You see I've made this H series battery compatible with the V series but originally the H series battery had a longer tab right here. These tabs here were longer, right? This tab here, these ones came out to about there on both sides. You can see where I cut them back. I cut these longer tabs back to make this 6.8 volt battery work, whereas this is a 7.2, I think, 7.2? Yeah, 7.3. The original P series was a 7.2. They came out with the H series battery to replace it but they had these longer tabs on them. You could always put a V-series battery on a camera that required a P or an H-series battery because the shorter tabs would fit on the other cameras. But the H-series battery would not fit on a camcorder that required the V-series. And it does work, sort of. See, Sony crippled Many of the camcorders, for example, the, uh, what was it, the was it H, HDR, FDR, HDR CX220, I think, I've got one, I've got one. It was my first, my first uh, SD based HD camera, which I gave to my son. That's the one I actually did a repair video for the HDMI port that broke and I fixed that and then I gave it to my son to play around with for his, his stuff that he was playing around with at the time, and I, I don't even think he knows where it is now. It's up in his room, I'm sure it's somewhere buried, and he probably has no idea where it is. But it would not use the H-series battery. After I modded it, it would clip onto the camera, but when you ran the camera for, I think, a minute and a half, it would check the chip that was inside the battery pack, and it would come up with an error message that said, this battery cannot be used. It would not allow me to use it, but the battery does work on the FDR or H, yeah, FDR AX33, and it works on the FDR AX53, and it works on the FDR AX100, and it works perfectly. So with that little modification, I can use this old battery. Now this battery is 2005 because I bought it for this camera. 
This is my, I, it was the second battery. I bought this camera in 2005 and I bought this as a second battery. The original one was a little thin battery and it, it packed it in. This one still works. Uh, this battery still works today. So if I put this battery, and, and this battery is what I actually used on this camcorder yesterday when I was doing the video on that rewinder. This was the battery that was actually powering the camera up. 2005 vintage. So this battery is what, uh, 17 years old? still working for those that say lithium batteries don't last they last just fine if you look after them so this is the battery that normally lives on my AX53 in fact the AX53 the very camera I'm shooting this with I use that as my charger because I leave it always plugged in in the workshop <clears throat> so when I need to charge a battery I just snap the battery on the back of this one as I use batteries on other cameras I just use this one as my recharger then I don't have to dig out any other adapters and so forth to uh, charge up batteries anyway getting back to this little camera because that's what we're talking about this time so also on this one you have a variety of other ports it has component AV output as well as AV output and the DC plug which just so happens it's the same adapter that my AX53 and AX33 and AX100 use so same power adapter for this one and as I said we had the on this side we have the control link for editing if you're going to use a remote control remote controller HD and DV video in and out and HDMI out so it's kind of a well versed little camera we open it up just like this has a tape transport that looks very much like the other one a little more sturdy maybe I don't know but what I can tell you is this camera has been banged around this camera was in the saddlebag of my bike when I laid it down after being run off the road by a truck and it went flying, got all dented up as you can see, still works. Uh, the lens got kind of buggered up on it. I had to change the lens. That was, the camera was only about a year old at the time or not even a year old and um, I, the lens failed on it and I, I sent it off to Sony because the lens um, stopped focusing properly after it was banged around and they changed out the lens. But more importantly, look at this. This has got a real flash on it so i can put a tape i can load a tape on this camera and i can turn it on and i can turn on a video mode and just like any other camcorder it's set in hdv mode in fact the the video that I shot a couple weeks back on the uh, the other three chip camera, this is the camera that did the opening shot. So if you want to see what the picture quality looked like, uh, the video that was the one where I I made the uh, the pinch roller uh, retaining clip out of a piece of heat shrink. The opening shots on that video was shot with this camera, and then I did the other ones, the rest of it with the other three chip camera. But so if you want to see what the picture quality of this looks like, that's the one. But hit record. Oh, my heads are dirty. I got a message telling me that my heads may be dirty and I need to use a cleaning tape. That's interesting. First time I've ever seen this message come up. So uh, I guess I'm going to have to clean the heads on this one. So we'll, uh, we'll do that. Let me grab a cleaning tape. So to clean the heads on a DV camcorder, same with an 8mm, really the only way to do it is with one of these abrasive tapes that clears the debris off the heads. That's really about the only way to do it on these. I'll put this into playback mode. Where are we here? Playback. And I'll just press the play button on here and I'll let it play for about 10 seconds. Good enough. Stop. And then I'll open it up and remove the tape without rewinding because these dry cleaning tapes you don't rewind them until they get to the end and then you can rewind them and use them again but you don't want to keep rewinding them because you will the tape will eventually wear out and uh, uh, if you keep rewinding them you'll just wear that tape out at that spot so you, you play them through for 10 seconds stop them remove them and then when the tape gets to the end then rewind it preferably not on a camera rewind it on a tape rewinder or, or uh, open open the vid and put, put a pen or something in and spool it back manually so that you're not running the tape against the heads in reverse because it's abrasive it's going to reduce the life of the heads anyway go back to this tape and the head should be clean now if I hit play there will be 
content on here. This is actually the tape that I used for... Oh, it was recording, even though it told me that the heads were uh, were clogged. I guess it detected that the, the heads could have been contaminated. There's the recording that was on from when I made that tape, because this is the tape I recorded that video on. So this actually did, even though it told me a message came up that said the heads might be clogged, they actually were recording. Well, I guess the head cleared itself right there. Yeah, okay. You see, breaking up a bit, the head was clogged. Anyway, you'll notice that this has got an anti-reflective coating, so you can actually see this viewfinder, a little flip-out screen, actually will work in uh, daylight. It works quite well outside. Um, it becomes trans-reflective, so when you're using this outside, the sun will actually be brighter than the backlight, but it uses the sun to illuminate the screen. It's a it's kind of a cool uh, little LCD screen that you can see outside. But it also has on the back here a, I don't know if it's going to come in on this camera or not, but it's got a little color LCD in the back here. Unfortunately, this doesn't pull out. You have to hold it up to your eye, but it has a little color LCD screen on the back. But this isn't the real strength of this camera. The real strength of this camera is for doing still photos. This is a 4 megapixel. It's a CMOS pickup. Unlike most cameras that use a CCD, this was one of the first that used a CMOS. Right there. CMOS pickup. Okay. And um, it also features a memory stick. The memory stick, one gigabyte, is used just for photos. So when you put the camera into photo mode when you operate the switch on the side you've got camera tape you've got camera memory and you've got playback so in camera memory mode it is now going to take a photo and if I frame something up here if I hit the photo button where was the photo button on this one uh, all right there on the top see it's been a while since I've used this it will take a photo now, I don't know if you can see it or not in here, but there is a mechanical shutter inside this lens and you will see it snap. See it? Look. If we can focus. Oh, my lens is dirty. <laughs> um, looks like it's got some fingerprints or maybe rain or something on it. But if we look down here, when I snap the picture, watch down in the center of the lens. See that? It has a mechanical shutter, like a real stills camera. Now, how many video cameras have you ever seen that have, a, have, have, have got a, an actual mechanical shutter in the base of the lens? Easier to see, I guess, if it's not zoomed in. And of course, all the lights in here. But that's pretty neat. Um, you don't see too many that do that. It also has a flash. If I can remember how to turn the flash on, I think it just the flash comes on automatically if it's in low light. So if I cover up the lens here, this flash should flash automatically. There you see. When, when there's lots of light, it doesn't flash. So it's kind of a, a neat little camera, and it was it it really turned out some good still images. I can review my images just by tapping the screen here and it will show me the images that I've just been taking. If I want to delete them, I can just delete it. And etc. And if I go to play edit and I select memory I can now see all the photos that are on here and I can scroll through them all one at a time. This is some of the pictures I just took today pointing up at the camera that's shooting the video including my new lights that are up in the ceiling there. These ones here are new. Picture of me. And uh, this has got a bunch of photos on here. Um, 
I don't know whether I can show them or not. I might be able to see. We'll, we'll cut them out if I can't show them. Uh, might be a fire. Yeah, there was a house fire. Neighbor's house caught on fire, and I took some pictures with this camera. Right, right at Christmas time. Uh, this is going way back. This is going back 15 years ago, I guess. Oh, my kids at Christmas time. You know, when they were younger. Much younger. They're all grown up now. Anyway, uh, I used to use this as a, a still camera. It was kind of like the best of both worlds. I had my DSLR at the time as well. But uh, when I was traveling, I used to just take this little camera with me because I had the best of both worlds. I could shoot in high definition on tape, and I could also shoot stills. And the quality of the stills, again, only 4 megapixel, but th that was what we had at the time. All camcorders, or I shouldn't say all camcorders, all the digital cameras of this, this time period were in the 2 to 3 megapixel range. Your phone, for example, had a 2 megapixel, if that, camera uh, pickup, uh, camera sensor. Most of them were less than that, if you, if you even had a, uh, a camera in your phone, because there wasn't very many. I, and I did have a Sony, and I do have one. I don't know where I did with it, but I do have the Sony, uh, the little phone that has the real flash. I, I got to look for it and find it because I know I didn't get rid of it. I hung on to it for that one reason. But it has, uh, it has a Xeon flash on it as well, like this, and it's a little shutter. You pull it down over the front. It's like a little 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 uh, shutter that covers the lens on this cell phone. It's a Sony, er, Sony Ericsson. I don't know where it is. I'll have to dig that up. It's, it's kicking around somewhere. I'll dig that up and show that off because I thought that was pretty cool. At the time, it was a three point. I think it was a 3.3 .3 megapixel, which was the highest quality phone camera that you could get at the time. Nobody else. This is before iPhone, right? There wasn't any iPhones. Uh, this is going way back to, say, the, the mid-2000s. But anyway, I figured I'd show this one here off just for something to do before I actually get down and do a real video today. I thought maybe I would show off this little Sony. Uh, this is an HDR HC3 from 2005. It's, uh, as I say, one of the nicest little tape-based camcorders in the compact size that I ever owned. Thanks for watching.